last week we heard about HDR coming to Steam Deck soon, but I have three other big new features I want to talk about too. Valve are actively working on all of these and I'm really excited to discuss it. Plus, there are some new Steam Deck updates, January is stacked with video games, and a lot more in today's Deck News Roundup video. If you like these sort of videos, don't forget to like and subscribe since it helps the channel to grow. I'm on the road to 50k and you're gonna help me get there. Alright, let's talk about that first big feature coming to Steam Deck in 2023. The big feature is the one that I talked about a good bit before the launch of the Steam Deck and that's HDR or high dynamic range. Most of you know what that is by now, but if you don't, the quick version is that it's a feature in many modern displays to be able to show a wider range of color, such as deeper and more vivid reds or even more shades of gray. This was a feature that we all knew well in advance would not be available for the Steam Deck even when it was docked because Linux itself did not have HDR implemented. Back in April, I pointed to evidence that Linux developers had already begun working on implementing the feature and I speculated that Valve could eventually take advantage of this even though the Steam Deck's native display wouldn't support it. Well, it looks like I was right because Valve developer Pierre Lou has been celebrating the progress of HDR coming to Linux desktop. First, he shared this tweet of HDR working on Linux and rightfully called it a new Linux gaming milestone. Then about a day later, he got it working on his Steam Deck that was docked to an LG OLED. This is in fact a huge milestone and it really should be celebrated. While I think some people will not really care too much about this feature coming to Steam Deck, especially if you play in handheld only, I think it's a pretty big deal and I've been looking forward to this for some time. Halo Infinite was one game I really started getting into just as the Steam Deck was releasing, and that's one title where HDR really helps it look that much better. It's hard to show off on YouTube, but here's an HDR heat map on Death Stranding Director's Cut. These heat maps were taken by one of the developers that helped to land this feature. This is about as clear as you can make it that this feature does allow for such a wider range of color that it goes a long way towards making your favorite games look even better. By the way, if you're worried that HDMR being implemented in Linux means that Valve is going to make a whole new Steam Deck revision with a native HDR display, then I'll tell you now that you can go ahead and put those worries to rest. The Fox made this tweet about the challenges of HDR on a portable, and the crux of the issue is power usage. Apparently, LCD displays with HDR use up to five times the amount of power as SDR LCD displays. So yeah, there's no way Valve would create a Steam Deck revision that would take advantage of HDR in handheld mode, but I'll bet we'll be seeing this officially come to the Steam Deck for connected displays pretty damn soon. There's one more feature we should see coming to the Steam Deck pretty soon, and I predicted this one as well. Ray tracing has virtually always been available for Windows on Deck, and back in April, Digital Foundry even published a video showcasing this. While the APU on the Steam Deck isn't powerful enough that you're going to want to play modern games with ray tracing on, it's still a technical curiosity nonetheless. For example, Digital Foundry showed off Quake 2 RTX with global illumination running on Windeck at 60fps. I mean, it was rendering at 720p, upscaled from 35% of that resolution, so no, it was not pretty, but it was kind of awesome to see this running 60fps with full path tracing on a handheld. In any case, this feature should now be coming to Linux as well. According to Gaming on Linux, you can now turn ray tracing on manually for Quake 2 RTX as well as Doom Eternal if you have the latest Mesa drivers on Linux. They're still adding features and the developers figure it needs a bit more debugging, but they plan to include this feature in the next major version of Mesa, which is version 23.0. Presumably it'll come downstream to Steam Deck when Steam Deck upgrades to that version of Mesa as well, so we too can run Quake 2 with global illumination, even if it is at the resolution of a potato. Next up is my favorite new feature that's coming to Steam Deck soon. Alright, the next feature to talk about is one that once again has been being worked on for some time. This is another feature that some people are going to be very excited about, and some other people are going to wonder why we care. This feature is peer-to-peer -peer downloads on a local area network. Data miners first discovered that Valve was working on this back in late October, and the last Steam update added some verbiage for this behind the scenes. That wording says the following, quote, This feature allows your PC to transfer game files to and from other PCs or Steam Decks on your local network network, reducing your internet traffic while downloading or updating a game, can limit to own devices, friends, or any user." End quote. If you're still not sure why this is a useful feature, it's helpful for downloading a game without having to download the game from Steam. You can just download the game from another machine in your network. More specifically, you don't have to download the game twice to play it on your desktop PC as well as your Steam Deck. You can just download it from Steam to your desktop PC and then download it from your desktop PC to your Steam Deck, or vice versa. 
This is helpful to get it downloaded faster, but it's also helpful if your ISP has data caps or anything like that. I was wondering if this would be limited to one user, but based on the wording here, it looks like you'll be able to download from any account that allows it. So if you have a roommate or you're visiting a friend that has a game, you can just download it from them. You'll still need to purchase it, but it's nice that the download doesn't have to be on Steam. Speaking selfishly, this is a really nice addition for content creators who have to transfer games to a new hardware device whenever they're doing a review. This means I can download all my benchmark games on a new device straight from my desktop, and that's pretty cool. All right, that leaves us with one other feature that's coming to Steam Deck soon. The next feature coming soon is the ability to buy new startup movies using Steam points and the ability to change the startup movie from within gaming mode. I saw this news over on Reddit posted by user Luigi Sauce. You can see there's a new customization section in the settings menu that allows you to visit the points shop to find startup movies and it lets you change the default startup movie right from within that customization section. That is awesome. Did you know the designer for this channel, his name is Chris by the way, made me a custom fan of deck startup movie? Here's what it looks like. I'm looking for feedback on this, so I'm only doing limited access for now. If you're subscribed to my Patreon, you can download it and give it a shot and give me some feedback if you're so inclined. After I get a little feedback, I will put it up on Steam Deck repo so that everyone can give it a try. Next up, we have a new Steam Deck beta update. There's not necessarily a whole lot to cover on this one, so I'm gonna breeze by this a bit. But they did say that they fixed the boot loop issue again that some people were having when updating their Steam Deck. Valve added support for the Steam controller using the dongle, and that's great because the dongle is a lot more responsive than the Bluetooth connection. That said, I don't know where my dongle is, so I'm gonna go have to find it and test this for you. And they also added support for another third-party controller, this one being the Thrustmaster eSwap Pro Controller Xbox. I wanted to point that one out because this controller is way too expensive for me, but it does look like it has some awesome features. It has all of these swappable components, including the ability to swap the D-pad placement to be either Xbox style or PlayStation style, and a whole lot more. Anyway, this controller looks neat, so if you have enough money to own one of these, I'd like to know what it looks like working on a Steam Deck. Speaking of cool controllers, Dell revealed a new controller at CES. I'm only really highlighting this here because it has a trackpad, and while it doesn't look like what I want in a control pad, I do want to see a lot more of this sort of innovation in control pads. This one relates to something they showed off at CES last year called Concept Nix, which is supposed to be a gaming server that allows you to store games in one place, but play throughout the house on your different TVs. I'm obviously a tech nerd, so that's the sort of thing that I would have been really a lot more interested in as a novelty at least before the Steam Deck, but now I can take an entire gaming collection with me throughout the house and I can buy a docking station for like each TV. And so yeah, I'm not really interested in something like that even as a novelty, but the pad itself seems pretty interesting. I would need a D-pad personally, but it does have the circular trackpad, plus scroll wheels on the bottom, touch sensors on the shoulder buttons, and of course the back buttons. I think that as the Steam Deck is introducing people to new control methods, now is a good time to explore what's really possible in order to bridge the gap between the accuracy of a mouse and the convenience of a console, whether it's trackpads, gyro, or something else entirely. Keeping on the subject of controller innovation, how about this Asus ROG control pad that was also shown at CES? Dreamcast walked so that this thing could run. It's got a 1.3 inch OLED and I'd love to see what ways this could be modded on the PC. It seems pretty neat. And then there's the PS5 accessibility controller kit, Project Leonardo. This is once again a controller I don't plan to use, but I'm so happy it exists. This thing is apparently extremely customizable with the ability to swap basically any of the components, the ability to have multiple profiles, and you can use up to two of these plus one dual sense to be used together as a single virtual controller. I hope that both this and the Xbox adaptive controller can work on the Steam Deck and help to make the Steam Deck meet the highest standards of accessibility. The next big update this week is an update to Proton. There are a bunch of titles that have fixes, but the first one I am most interested in is Jedi Fallen Order. Apparently that's working again in Proton Experimental. This game, I believe, was broken when EA updated their launcher. This Proton update should fix that, so I'll be giving it a shot since this was a game I really wanted to get back to and finish on the Steam Deck. And the other game I'm really interested in is Gungrave Gore. I don't know if I'm gonna like this game. It gets really mixed reviews on Steam, 
but I am a sucker for PS2 style action games. There's a certain nonsense to them that I really love. Anyway, it looks like this plays pretty well on Steam Deck now, so it might be a good time to give it a shot. Steam Deck HQ even posted an updated performance review. They used FSR quality with mostly medium settings to get 50 FPS for like three and a half hours of battery life, which is quite nice. Let me know if there are other games that got playability fixes that you're looking forward to trying. Speaking of video games, it looks like January is jam-packed with releases. As with every month, I'm going to recommend you take a look at the Humble Choice this month. The January bundle is especially good because it's got Doom Eternal and Ali Ali World. I'm actually going to skip this month since I have those two titles, but it's quite a bargain to get both of these for like $12, not to mention the other games as well. I have a link in the description if you're interested. But outside of that, I'm surprised by the number of interesting games coming to Steam here at the first month of the year. Forspoken and Dead Space are the two big new releases for the month, and I do wonder how these are going to play on deck. Of these, I'm a little more interested in Forspoken, what with its combat and the fact that it's built on Final Fantasy XV's Luminous Engine, but the remake of Dead Space looks great too, and I'm really hoping it sticks to landing. We should be seeing some reviews pretty soon, so I remain cautiously optimistic. There are also two previously released games that are making their Steam debut. First is Watch Dogs Legion. Watch Dogs 1 and 2 were released to Steam, but Watch Dogs Legion was never available for sale on this platform. Instead, you had to buy it from Epic Game Store or direct from Ubisoft. Anyway, it does play well enough on deck, so if you were waiting for it to be available on Steam, now is the time. The other game that made its Steam debut is Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Unfortunately, this is a great game at a great price, but with some major issues. This is available at a deep discount. It's normally $15, but it's available now for $5. But the problem is that it has forced online DRM via Denuvo. It's also said to have terrible audio quality, some input lag, poor controller support, and of course the Ubisoft launcher. So while the price is cheap, the actual cost of playing the game is unfortunately pretty steep. Hopefully they resolve these issues pretty soon. Persona 3 Portable also comes to Steam this month, and I'm not quite excited for this as I expect it to be. I think that the rumors of a Persona 3 remake have killed my hype just a bit. I just feel like I'd rather wait for the remake now. Hopefully we hear more about that soon. Finally, there are some amazing indies coming out this month. I highly recommend checking out this video from your friend Jacob. I'll have a link in the description. He names 10 awesome looking indies, but I'm especially excited for a few of these. One is Pizza Tower, which is a fast paced 2D platform inspired by the Wireland series with an emphasis on movement, exploration, and score attack. I freaking love the Wireland series, so I can't wait to give this one a try. And I like the art style too. This is pretty cool. The next one is Vengeful Guardian Moonrider. This is a game I've been waiting for for a long time. It's by the makers of Blazing Chrome, and it's inspired by the likes of Shinobi and Ninja Gaiden. I played the demo and it was excellent, so I'll be picking this up on day one. And the last one is Season, which seems like an evolution of the walking sim genre. In this case, it's a cycling sim, but seriously, I love these sort of games when they're done well. This one in particular has a beautiful art style and a thoughtful sounding narrative and atmosphere. It just looks like the perfect sort of game to play a bit before bed. All right, for the community spotlight, there is one video I really need y'all to watch. Over on the Nerd Nest channel, Bill refurbished an old arcade cabinet, and now he has an awesome looking main machine powered by a freaking Steam Deck. I can't tell you how jealous I am. That is amazing. Go check that video out to see how he did it and how cool it looks. All right, y'all, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're interested in the Fan to Deck boot video, then go ahead and sign up for my Patreon. I even added a $1 tier for the occasion, so please take advantage of that. All right, Deck Gang out. Goodbye.